We open on a brutalist housing block. Our story will unfold within these four walls. A story of isolation, female oppression, and toxic masculinity. This is Secrets Behind the Wall by Koji Wakamatsu. We cut to an injection, and then a love scene. But all eroticism is removed by the overshadowing portrait of Stalin. No matter where the camera goes, the picture remains. Oppressive, unerotic, and in many ways, disturbing. Is the painting watching the characters, or is it watching the viewers? The point remains, the scene is removed of any intimacy or eroticism. And yet, this was believed to be an erotic film. Allow me to explain. In Japan, after the post-war occupation, studios began demanding content fast to accommodate for the rising number in cinema attendees. This led to Japan's new wave, an experimental time for left cinema and a radical one at that. But the studios began to become frustrated with the seemingly plotless films. Films like Branded to Kill seemed too radical and the studios just didn't want to invest. Smaller studios, however, had found a safer genre to operate in, a genre that pleased the then predominantly male audience, and more importantly, the audience that had the most money. The golden age of erotic softcore cinema was born, these were called pink films, and they soon became the dominant genre for many studios and domestic cinemas. Sex sold, and it sold well. Pink films were churned out at rapid succession. Quality was not the priority for many of the smaller companies. They were quick turnaround projects made cheap and fast. As long as it had X amount of sex scenes and or erotic themes slash content, the industry didn't care. They just released it. And some directors were smart enough to see this as an opportunity they needed. And thus, we end up back at this. Wakamatsu, a once Yakuza member tasked with overseeing the local film productions were paying up Yakuza fees for operating on their turf, saw an opportunity with the current film climate. He noticed that if he produced the films with enough softcore elements to warrant being classified as a pink film, then he could find distribution. Pink films became his Trojan horse, his backdoor into the industry. But eroticism was not his goal, instead he created some of Japan's most politically left cinema, even by today's standards. And Secrets Behind the Wall is one of those films. Wives intertwine in a confined housing block, with a bleak sense of dread brooding over them. This is a film with a sharp political satire about it, and one thing is for sure, it is not erotic. Wakamatsu uses the genre to, in many ways, subvert expectation. He often uses violence in place of eroticism to somewhat criticise the genre he operates in. Violence wasn't as heavily censored as sex was, and thus it becomes a representation of the power play within the erotic cinema. Males act violent towards females because the very genre is an oppressive masculine construct, where females are passive and males are dominant. He turns that into an unerotic, uncomfortable experience for the viewer. But behind the surface level, he toys with political ideologies. For example, the female in the opening, now married to a salary man, is having an affair with her ex-militant lover, both part of the communist student generation that fought against the US-Japan Security Treaty, and now that male makes a living from profiting off the Vietnam War. They are both now the people they fought against. Their shared intimacy is the only act of rebellion they have left. She is an oppressed, locked away housewife, and he is an exploitative, impotent male. His radiation poisoning makes him fearful of having children. In many ways, he is emasculated, a theme that reoccurs in many of the males throughout the story. Wakamatsu explores the pressure that exists on both genders, taking it to the extremity of violence waiting to happen. But despite all this anti-eroticism, Secrets Behind the Wall became a disgrace for Japan after it found its way into the Berlin Film Festival after an erotic distribution company in Germany submitted it. Japan was already often reluctant to give their films an international presence, let alone a pink film. Japan was very ashamed of this genre, especially how popular it was. They didn't want it to be internationally viewed or act as a representation of their culture. So much so that a campaign was created to stop it from being shown at the festival but left-wing cultural figures rallied in its defence. As Toscano and Hirasawa note, for once, 
The politics of the film, imprinting the contradictions of Japan onto the flesh of the characters, dovetailed with the politics of its distribution. Japan wasn't aware of what this film was. To them, they didn't care. They only cared about creating erotic content. Wakamatsu was able to get into cinema by exploiting this, but ultimately, it stopped him from achieving the things he would have been able to have achieved otherwise. That German distribution company noticed the importance of this film, noticed that it was not a simple piece of erotic exploitation, it was more than that, and they gave Wakamatsu a name beyond the genre. But Wakamatsu's career never got easier, he was often blacklisted, always an outsider, right to the end of his career. His career was always fiercely radical and unapologetic. The man even blew up his own house for the finale of his historical epic, United Red Army. This once, Yakuza henchman found a voice in cinema, and despite all odds, he never let anyone silence that voice. He created a large contribution to cinema that is still underappreciated. He elevated a genre and stayed true to his politics, despite whatever the mainstream wanted. He manipulated the industry, he played the system for the benefit of art. But our view of Japan, the western stereotype of Japan being a strange and weird country, a place of bizarre sexual fixations and abnormal fetishes, has led to Wakamatsu's films failing to translate. We overlook the political satire and see their affirmation of the stereotype we have, and that makes the films lose all essence of what they are. In a way, the struggle for pink films to still be taken seriously does to some degree highlight our ignorance. These are important historical films, and Wakamatsu is one of the true champions of the genre. He is Japan's erotic cinema rebel. I just want to say thank you for watching guys and thank you for the support that I've had on some of the previous videos that I've done. It's been very nice to see that kind of support and people sharing the videos and sharing that they've enjoyed it and stuff. So if you did enjoy the video, leave a comment. If you didn't, let me know why. I enjoy seeing some constructive feedback. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Um, it just helps me kind of see the that people are liking the content and that allows me to kind of carry on having a reason to make this so yeah cheers guys